Hey guys, Nick Iberry here, IFT 180, coming at you for the second video in our nutrition series. Uh, first video, we talked about macros. We talked about overall calories, proteins, fats, carbs, and how we put that together into making a diet plan for ourselves and how we uh, follow our coaches' recommendations when it comes to macros. So what we're going to talk about for the second video is going to be actual meal prep and meal planning. Uh, what I always do is I always start off with the most essential uh, ingredient uh, that we put in our bodies of all, and that's going to be water. Now with regards to water, I always recommend for all of my clients that we're drinking at least a gallon of water a day. We're always told that water is essential for the body, we can't live without it. There's a list of, of benefits that we have from making sure that we have uh, the proper amount of water consumption, brain function, digestion. Uh, blood flow, blood pressure, uh, it helps regulate body temperature, the list goes on. And so needless to say, it's an essential ingredient that we need to have in our body and plenty of it. Moving on from there, we're going to start talking about carbs. And when we talk about carbohydrates, we're talking about several different uh, uh, types of foods. We're talking about fruits, we're talking about vegetables, we're talking about grains, you know, oatmeal, rice, those types of, uh, of foods. So with that, uh, I want to start off with fruits. Uh, when we talk about fruits um, and, and vegetables, we, we have a couple different options. We have fresh fruits and vegetables, we have canned fruits and vegetables, and we have uh, frozen or bagged fruits and vegetables. So from everything that I've ever learned with regards to frozen vegetables and frozen fruits, there's not a whole lot of difference in them when you compare them to the nutritional value of fresh vegetables and fruits. Uh, with regards to canned fruits and vegetables, I am not an opponent. I, I actually use a, a good amount of canned vegetables myself, but I do not use canned fruits because of the sugar content, the syrup content. So uh, research has shown that with regards to canned uh, fruits, canned vegetables, when it comes to the nutritional value, there's not a lot of difference between those. In conclusion, whether you're using bag fruits or fresh fruits, canned vegetables or, or fresh vegetables, the important thing is that you're getting your fruits and vegetables in you. And the great thing that I like about fruits and vegetables is they're solid carbohydrates and rarely, if ever, are you going to find much fat in them. Um, the other uh, carbohydrates that we can talk about are grains and beans uh, and, and there are several other types of carbohydrates that fall into this category a little bit. But when we're talking about beans, great source of fiber, it's one of my staples in my diet. Uh, and, and it's also a great source of carbohydrate and also very low in fat. So after we look at the beans uh, and, and different types of vegetables, obviously we have corn, which is going to be another staple in my personal diet. It's, e you know, it's, uh, it's easy to prepare. Uh, it's a lot of carbs, low amount of, uh, low amount of fats, and it's uh, absolutely uh, a good ingredient to throw in with some rice and some chicken whenever you're doing a little bowl of, of, of slop, for lack of a better term. Next, we'll move to rice. Uh, that is a staple for my diet, and I always recommend it to other people who especially have uh, higher carbohydrates in their macro counts uh, for the fact that it is low fat, there is protein in it, and there's a, a, a various different types of rice. There's brown rice, white rice, and there's jasmine rice. This actually happens to be jasmine rice, which is the uh, primary rice that I use because it is zero fat and there is a good amount of protein in it, comparatively speaking, with other rices. Last thing we're going to talk about is going to be the proteins. Uh, obviously, this is going to be our meat, our fish, uh, dairy to a certain extent, um, poultry. And, uh, and so I have here prepared a couple pounds of chicken. I always do uh, boneless, skinless chicken breast. And one of the things you want to make sure of when you're, when you're looking at your proteins is your cuts of meat and also whether or not skin is on them because the skin and the, and the different cuts of meat are going to uh, raise and lower the fat content in uh, your, your protein source. So the last category of our macros are going to be our fats. And as we talked about in the last videos, fats come in pretty much every other category that we're going to have, our proteins and our carbs, uh, a lot of times anyways. Uh, and so uh, for me and for my clients, what I typically do is I say, hey, fats are going to take care of themselves if you're meeting your macros with regards to your, uh, with regards to your proteins and your carbs for the simple fact that when you're eating chicken, there's fat in it. Uh, when you're eating, you know, when you're cooking with butter, there's fat in it. If you're losing, using uh, spray butter, 
then, uh, then you're in a situation where you have that extra room for fat. But regardless uh, of the situation, your fats are going to essentially take care of themselves when you add flavor to your, to your carbs and to your uh, proteins. But, for instance, I consider cheese a fat. In this piece of cheese, uh, for each and every one, there's six grams of fat. So for most of my clients, that's going to be 10% of their fats for the day. Um, and because the way I operate and the way I, I plan out my clients' diets are going to be typically... Uh, moderate carbs, moderate protein, sometimes higher protein, sometimes higher carbs, and then uh, lower fat content in the macros. Um, butter, I did, one of the things about butter is we can absolutely use it. Uh, the fact of the matter is, is that we use it to cook our eggs, to, to throw down on the skillet when we're cooking plenty of different foods. Chicken, when I cooked my chicken earlier today, I actually used coconut oil, but plenty of people prefer the taste of butter. So the thing with butter is, is that it is a fat, and we need to count it with our macros. And so one of the things that I do when I do uh, use butter to cook, for instance, with eggs, if I'm gonna cook two eggs and put a little bit of butter on there, I'm gonna include that in my macros. I'm gonna say, if I put you know uh, just a little snippet of butter on there, I'm gonna put an eighth of a serving of butter to make sure that I get those fats there in my macro count. Next, we're gonna talk about condiments. That's when we're talking about hot sauce, soy sauce, ketchup, mustard, those types of things. The important part is that we don't forget that those have ingredients in them and those ingredients have calories in them and those calories have macros in them and so the important part is that we're counting them in our macros. Uh, a lot of condiments that we're going to have are going to be zero calories which are a good thing in that we add flavor to what is often considered a bland and, and repetitive or redundant uh, diet and, uh, and we do so without adding too many calories. So uh, hot sauce most of the time zero calorie. Worcestershire sauce or soy sauce sometimes a little bit of calories, sometimes zero calories. And then we have your regular spices, salt, pepper, corianders, uh, your different things like that, that, you know, again, flavor it how you want, flavor your meat how you want, flavor your vegetables, uh, your, your meals how you want. But again, most important part is that we count them in our macros if there's calories included. So the last thing I want to talk about with regards to the foods that we take in, that we consume, are going to be the, what we'll call the extras, the supplementation. Um, there's plenty of supplements out there, uh, different types of supplements for different things we want to do with our body or, or, or uh, improve with with regards to our nutrition. And so one of the most common ones that's discussed and one of the most common ones that I recommend to clients is going to be protein supplementation. Now, when we're talking about protein supplementation, we're talking about protein powder and we can be talking about protein bars. Uh, and, you know, there's different types of proteins. There's casein protein, there's whey protein, there's soy protein. The list goes on. And what the important part is, is that you understand what each one of them does, what they're used for, when they're used. And if you need help with that, if you find a good supplement store in your neighborhood, uh, it's likely that you're going to have some fitness nutritional specialists or other people certified to be able to help you out with uh, figuring out what it is you need to supplement your diet with, given what your goals are. Uh, the last thing I want to talk about are energy drinks. Um, the reality is, is that there's a lot, of, uh, a lot of discussion about whether energy drinks are good or bad for you, and I'm sure that just like any other topic in science, we can find 200 articles that say they are good for you and 200 articles that say they are bad for you. My personal opinion is that they're not going to hurt you uh, as long as taken in moderation. Uh, the fact of the matter is, is that from everything I've learned, uh, the most, the most uh, uh, dangerous ingredients that are going to be found in energy drinks are going to be caffeine and sugar. And those are found in so many other items that if we're going to point out energy drinks, we've got to start pointing out a whole lot more other items. So with regards to energy drinks, just like with protein and just like with uh, uh, protein bars or any other supplement that you're taking. So whenever I'm uh, choosing to uh, consume an energy drink, I'll typically look for the zero calorie energy drinks, Rockstar, uh, the Pure Zeros. There's plenty of them out there really. Uh, and then when we move to our protein bars, protein powders, other supplements, you know, the main thing is that you're paying attention to your macros, that you're looking for what meets your macros, what meets your dietary and nutrition needs, and you go from there.